Hey everybody, back again, back, back, back. I know it makes you happy. So we were talking about warp drives. A warp drive, or warp engine, is a device that enables a spacecraft to enter and leave the medium of warp space. Warp drives incorporate their own navigational units, able to briefly glimpse into warp space in order to observe its current movements. From these movements, it is possible to calculate a course. Any corrective maneuvers that may have to be made whilst in warp space and the moment to return to real space. The distance traveled in this way is called, are you ready for it? A jump. That's right, they're making warp jumps. And a jump may be of one to four light years, depending upon the conditions prevalent in warp space, such as such a journey typically takes between one and six days of real space time, contracting it into one to four hours of perceived time on the spacecraft. A spacecraft plunged into warp space at random will travel at one to four light years per hour of perceived time, divided by 36 hours of real space time. Whilst in warp space, a craft is isolated from real space. However, Psychics are capable of maintaining or establishing telepathic contact if they are sufficiently strong. If they are human astropaths, for example. <laughs> so did you get that? We have an actual mathematical formula now. Okay, so basically warp space time is um, 1 36th the time of of real space so one hour in warp space is approximately 36 hours in real space they made warp jumps which enabled them to travel uh, one to four light years per hour and it lasts uh, well they uh, they you heard it about one to four hours that was it that was it you now know what warp drives are. No weeks-long, years-long travel in warp space currents from one side of the galaxy to the other. Not in Rogue Trader, it didn't. But let's go on. It is dangerous for spacecraft to leave warp space close to the proximity of stars. The mass of a solar body possesses a comparable mass in warp space and acts as an irresistible attractive force to bodies near it. Okay, so that's basically saying that, they, that there's a gravitational-like effect in warp space. This makes it almost impossible to leave or re-enter normal space within a solar system without being drawn inside the sun itself. Even with the utmost care, occasional accidents do happen, and this is one of the constant dangers of warp travel. The usual practice is to aim at breaking warp space well outside, breaking into, I'm sorry, breaking into warp space well outside of a solar system, and complete a journey using conventional space drives, which... Uh, when you really think about it, is already one hell of a trip. I mean, if you're thinking about you're traveling to Terra or Earth, you have to travel outside of the solar system first, then jump into the warp. So how's that trip being made is, uh, uh, is actually much longer than the warp jump itself. Okay? It might take them a week and that's going pretty fucking fast, to get outside of a solar system before they jump into the warp. 
There was no, I just got out of the orbit, and now I'm going to whoop, pop into the warp, and wow, three weeks later, come out on the other side of the galaxy. Not in Rogue Trader. <clears throat> Next, warp gates. A warp gate is a point in real space which is linked to another point in real space by a tunnel through warp space. The tunnel somehow avoids the normal disturbances of warp space, allowing a journey to be made within a fixed time in perfect safety. The existence of warp gates represents something of a mystery. They Are they a natural feature or artificial? If artificial, who or what created them and for what purpose? Some warp gates have certainly been artificially enhanced because their entrances are delineated by mechanical constructions whose exact function can only be guessed at. Other warp gates are mere black holes in space. Got it? Got it? Now you know what warp gates are. They were not the domain of the Eldar. They were... Well, as you can see there, natural or artificial, con artificially constructed. Maybe they just had an artificial gate put at the end of it. Maybe you're just flying into a black hole, which could be a, un a raw, natural warp gate. Who knows? Warp gates occur in different sizes. They occur in the depths of space, at the boundaries of solar systems, within solar systems, and even on planets. The largest are easily big enough to permit the passage of spacecraft and are usually situated at the edge of a solar system or amongst its outer planets. Other gates are only large enough to permit the passage of small vehicles or perhaps human-sized creatures. These occur mostly on planet surfaces and lead directly to other gates on the surfaces of other planets. All gates are rare. The smaller types are extremely rare. Planetary gates are often disguised or respond only to electrical, psychic, or other signals, which would seem to indicate a certain amount of intended secrecy on the part of their builders. Huh. Okay, well, there you go, okay? All space-going races are prepared to utilize warp gates when they find them. I'm going to say that sentence again. All, all, all space-going races are prepared to utilize warp gates when they find them. Although, discovering where they lead can often be hazardous. Many gates appear to be defective and can dump a ship randomly into warp space. Others can lead to places which may once have been stars or planets, but are now no more than empty tracks of space. The possibility of emerging into a distant, hostile, alien star empire has also been considered. It may be that craft vanishing into warp space have been transported beyond the galaxy itself. Warp gates have the disadvantage of being predetermined, permitting travel only within fixed lane. They are also quite slow, taking 2d4 hours of perceived time and travel 2d6 days of real time to transverse distances of up to 4 light years. Many warp gates appear to be within the region of 20 to 30 light years apart. Boom. There you go. Next, we're going to go on warp portals. What's the difference? You'll find out next time. Until then, bye.